If you were to travel into space, you might feel far away from life on Earth. But space can actually help keep us connected. It's all down to understanding the properties of different waves. Now, you see when I shine this light, that's just called visible light. But did you know that there's other types of light that you can't see? No. There's also a type of light called infrared. You might have heard of it on things like these, TV remotes. Because when you want to change the channel, you push a button and it changes. Oh, yeah, there's a little red light in there. It's a little light in there, isn't it? Right, tell me if any of you can see it. No. Have you all got mobile phones? Yeah. yeah. I do. Wicked. <laughs> they got cameras on them, yeah? Yeah. We need something that's sensitive to infrared light. But look what your phones are capable of doing. Red. Yeah, it's red. Can yeah, you see the light? Red. Can you see a light off of it? Yeah. yeah. And that's because your phones don't just see visible light, your phones see infrared, but your eyes only see visible. The sensor on the phone's camera can detect a wider range of wavelengths of light than our eyes can. We can only see visible light, but there are other light waves, all with similar properties. We call all of these types of waves electromagnetic waves and they are all arranged on the electromagnetic spectrum. At one end of the spectrum, we have low-frequency radio waves and microwaves. Infrared, visible and ultraviolet waves have a higher frequency, while X-rays and gamma rays have a very high frequency and are at the opposite end of the spectrum. All electromagnetic waves carry energy from one place to another, and they do it at the speed of light. They can also travel through a vacuum such as space. That's why they're used in communications, because the signals can be sent rapidly across large distances. And vans like this make sure we never have to miss any event, however far away. They're equipped to send live video back to a TV broadcaster from anywhere in the world. They do this by sending microwaves through the atmosphere to be picked up by satellites in space thousands of miles above the Earth's surface. The signal is then sent by a satellite back to a TV broadcaster. So how does the signal actually get to my TV set at home? Well, Jay, the TV broadcaster can transmit it to your TV in different ways. If you've got an aerial on your TV at home, you receive the signals via radio waves transmitted by a TV mast. If you've got a satellite dish on the side of your house, you receive the signals via microwaves sent from a satellite. Ah, oh, so does that mean when I watch my favourite football team live on TV, the signals had to go miles into space and back again before getting to me? Got it in one. The signal isn't sent directly because it would be absorbed by obstacles, such as buildings. Ah, oh, that makes sense. I'm feeling your hat, by the way. Nice one. Yours ain't too bad yourself. Yeah. So nearly all forms of communication, whether emails, texting, TV or the internet, uses some part of the electromagnetic spectrum being sent through space. And that's pretty amazing. Now, all it leaves for me to do is wave goodbye. It starts in the radio waves with a lower frequency than the microwaves that come next. As we step over the infrared to fire Richard of York, giving battle in vain. But no, friend, that's a mnemonic for the visible spectrum that blends into ultraviolet radiation. Then X-rays come at increased frequencies with the gamma rays taking up the highest energies. 